uh, functional range conditioning, hmm. where you you work on like building strength in the end ranges of motion. And the more you do that, the more you have the ability to kind of hit these shots where your arm is a little bit more down. Or like say, for instance, I'm doing a back double and now I can bring my arms further back. Hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, it's actually super, super helpful. And it, on top of the the posing benefits, is it's like it helps with injury prevention as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I could see that. And you bring something up that I think is really valuable. Um, it, it, like our last guy in that side shot, you know, he, he didn't have like much twist going on. And, and I think yeah. some of that can be flexibility. You know what I mean? So that's another bit. Yeah. So I've done, especially with a lot of the twisting shots I've done, I've done a lot of like FRC training to kind of build up that, that mobility, that range of motion um, in those shots. So sometimes posing isn't just like a, you're not sometimes posing is more of a um like you said a flexibility and mobility issue rather than you just hitting the shot wrong some people just can't get into it what's up guys welcome back to think big bodybuilding media i'm scott mcnally uh if for those of you new to our content let me encourage you to like and subscribe and share all that stuff those things they believe it or not they really do help to boost our content today we are joined by two-time Arnold Classic champion. We've got Terrence Ruffin with us. What's going on, brother? Hey, not much, man. I'm in, out in Houston. I'm thinking about moving out here, so uh, everything's good, yeah. Hell yeah, yeah, man. Dude, it seems like every bodybuilder is either moving to Florida or yeah. to, to Texas now. That's that's the story, huh? Yeah, yeah. I um I didn't want to go to Dallas because, I, I I mean, Dallas is definitely nice, and there's a lot of, you know, the Sean Carita, you know, um, Keon, a lot of other pros out in that area, but I like Houston, but I like the Labradas. Um, they're very nice, and um, there is a little bit more chill, I think. Okay. Sure. Mm-hmm. I could see that. What if we got Terrence hooked up with Sean Clarita? Now, Sean Clarita was like a bantamweight or something when he started. We get Terrence into 212 two years from <laughs> <laughs> so Talk you about a storyline. <laughs> he was like, I was a big fan of his when I first started for that, you know, for that reason from his, uh, his origins. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I remember – it's kind of funny looking back because I was just a fan and like he did answer my questions, but I could tell like I was just some kid like just like he's like just just do this, you know and yeah, <laughs> you know. But uh, now it's cool, you know. I've gotten to train with them a couple of times, and I need to make a trip up there before I, I head back home to Florida. Um, it's like a four hour drive to Dallas, though. I know he has his own gym now. The what's it called? Um, Jungle uh, Gym. I think. Is that the name of it? I think yeah. So. It's pretty incredible, though. He was telling us about it at the Arnold. He said, you know, it's it's like five minutes from his house. It's basically like an entire compound. It's basically like a bodybuilder's dream gym, and it's just for him. It's private, you know? It's pretty great, and it's funny because, like, I saw his uh, Instagram today, and he's like, oh, I got this new piece of equipment in. And it's funny because I'm like, bro, like, you're, like, sharing all this with us as if we could, like, come to the gym and, and check out the equipment. <laughs> <laughs> like you're just showing off your new toy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, but yeah, I definitely want to take a trip up there and, and see him. I haven't seen him in a while. That would be cool. I'd love to see you guys training together again. So speaking of training, I know that you've been doing some different. Oh, by the way, guys, I, I buried the lead. We're going to do a bunch of posing critiques. You guys sent us in um, a bunch of pictures for critique. Terrence, you're known as being one of the best posers in the industry. I'm talking even like. Even the old school guys, the guys who say nobody knows how to pose anymore. They're like, except for, <laughs> Ter- they'll, they'll mention you, Terrence Ruffin, maybe a couple other guys. So we're honored today. Some of our listeners set in, sent in photos. We're going to critique them. But before we did, I just wanted to catch up with you a little bit. Uh, you're, you've, you're, you're, you're doing some different training now. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I know it's brand new. Yeah, it's very brand new. So, um, oh, the you know, over like since like 2016 i've been training basically the same just progressive overload very low volume you know pushing the weights as high as i can get them but um over the past like year or so i've been having a lot of like joint pains and you know it's funny when i was younger i would train with john and i would see how different his training was compared to mine and um now i'm starting to get a little taste of why (laughs) you know (laughs) pushing weights forever so um, I reached out to uh, Jared Feather with RP um, Strength. Yeah. Uh, and he, he's helping me with my programming now. Um, so only I've only done two days so far. He came down here um, to help me with the, the first day and kind of explain some things. But um, 
so far so good. I feel a lot better, um, a lot better joint wise. And um, the reason I reached out to Jared is because he's, he works with Nick Walker as well. Yeah. And I've trained with Nick Walker. We trained very much the same like in the past. And I was like, well, if Nick likes it, then I'll probably like it too. Yeah. What what's different about it so far? I know you don't have a lot of experience yet, but compared to what you were doing before. So as of right now, um, you know, Joe's always taught me to, to have, you know, good execution when training, but um, he puts a little bit more emphasis on it, more so than uh, Joe, um, which I was honestly shocked at. Like it was just <laughs> a bit a bit tedious the first day, like really like I, we did chess the first day and he was very, very meticulous with it. Yeah. Uh, on top of that, uh, right now we're doing less exercises per day. Hmm. So I'm in like, uh, but on, for let's say arms, I'm doing arm, like at least one arm movement. Almost, there's only one day I'm not doing an arm movement is hmm. on, my, on my programming now. Um, so a little bit more frequency in arm training, but um, less volume each day. Okay. Is, um, yeah, and legs too. Is arm something that you you want to try to bring up more? Is that a, a focus? Yeah, yeah. I always want to bring up arms. <laughs> we can but, all uh, use more arms, right? Yeah. So he he spread out the the volume even more so than what I'm used to. Um. So even so, I did legs yesterday, and basically it was uh, calf raises, seated leg curl, um, leg press, and walking lunges. So that was it. Okay. And then I'll do some RDLs later in the week, and that'll be um, it for now. Yeah. Okay. So my, I know those guys like to push, vo- at least from what I've seen, they push volume a little bit higher, like less exercises, but they'll push the, the sets up to maybe like five sometimes or even higher, you know. Okay. Where I mean more exercises with very low volume, like two, one to two sets, some, one to three sets yeah. per exercise, yeah. So with so, this routine, four exercises yeah. for legs, how how many working sets did you do per exercise this time around? So right now, I think the first two weeks we're, we're taking it pretty easy, um, just giving my joints some time to heal. Um, yeah. But um, we did anywhere from two to three uh, working sets. And the, the crazy thing, and then RIR, like a three. I can't really tell, to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> with there's some studies out too that talk about it about like uh, people don't can't really tell like the further you get away from failure the harder it is to, for you to really tell how far you know the hmm. RRs are. Yeah, I think so. I'm somewhere around three, um, give or take a couple. But um, there was something else that was that was unique. Oh, um, the other unique thing I would say is. With Joe, it was a lot of um, we would always do like a top set, then a back off set, and then if we did another set, it'll be another back off set. The way um, Jared's going about it at the moment is we'll do two set like so for leg press, I did two sets at the same weight, and then we would drop it down a bit. Um, so some it's a lot of a lot of the same principles, but uh, some some differences. Um, some differences here and there for sure for sure yeah and then the other thing is um they're a little bit more into mesocycle so i would push a workout for a very long time like months and months and months and now with uh with jared he's saying we're gonna probably change exercise um you know the exercises every 10 to 12 weeks and he says what that'll help accomplish is like um he's like the novelty of training can help you build a little bit more muscle and then also um, changing up the movement patterns a little bit more will help um, mitigate like wear and tear on certain parts of your your joints and your muscles and things like that. I was like, okay, okay, yeah, it's it's worth trying. And and at the end of the day, here's the thing: is that you know we're we're all always able to learn something new with training, and it's not yeah. that one thing isn't a, a good <laughs> plan. You know, it's not like all of a sudden Joe Bennett's training sucks. It's that no, you you ran that for an extended period of time. You made incredible progress doing that. And now the question is, is, OK, how do I get creative with this? How do I find the next step to continue creating a novel stimulus? Right. 
Right, right. And I think Joe, um, I still train with Joe like at least once a week. Right on. Uh, you guys are a great matchup too. I, I really like seeing you guys training together. It's cool. No, yeah, he's awesome, man. I'm, yeah, yeah. I remember when I came out here um, and trained with Hunter, he's like, are you guys good? Because, you know, we, I was like, yeah, we're good, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> but like we've trained like I don't think there's very many people that have trained with their, you know, obviously like maybe guys that train with Charles Glass, but I train with Joe pretty much every day from like 2018 to 2023. That's so for cool, five man. years, like every uh, pretty much every single day. Uh, so yeah, he's like probably yeah. I know him. We've talked to each other more than like most people. Uh, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. And your physique is showing it. You know, you you've made just so much progress in that time. In fact, I want to see if I can find a picture here. I grabbed this picture right before I we started. Just posted it. On, on Instagram. Um, oh, I don't know if that's the picture I was going to post. Check this oh, one out. Okay. Check this one out. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's the oh, one. Oh, okay. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. guy on the left right there, who, by the way, guys, I have a, like kind of an earlier and a newer picture of Terrence for those listening on audio. What <laughs> what advice would you tell that guy on the left now, knowing what you know today about training? Well, it's lucky. Um, literally, that's where Joe met me. It was... Um, he saw he lived in Tampa and he's he came to the show and saw me there and said, hey, man, like, I think there's some things I can help you with when it comes to training. And um, I was 20, I think 22 here. OK. And um, I didn't know anything about anything. So I was like, <laughs> some type of direction would be nice, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, I used to drive like eight hours from Fort Walton Beach down to, to Tampa. Um, I think like once a month to come and train with him. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, basically, but just to just indulge, yeah, I would tell him uh, definitely progressive overload, logging your, um, tracking your reps, um, tracking your weights. Definitely, that was probably the most important thing I did during that, that time period. And then uh, learn as much as you can about execution and things like that, too. Things like that too. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and those are all things that you continue to focus on. Is there? Would you say there's anything different that a classic guy is doing with training than than an open guy is? Not really. I mean, people. I, it's funny, man. Is people always try to make this huge um, difference between like classic and bodybuilding? And I'm like, I train pretty. Like Joe trains me, and 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 um, He's trained Flex Lewis and Dallas McCarver, and we've all trained the same. I mean, they're a lot bigger, a lot stronger, but <laughs> same movement, same everything, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, there's not really any difference. The only the only difference I would say is like, but and it's really not a difference, is like the only difference I would say is classic. We have to be a little bit more aware of where we add muscle because we do have a cap. So whereas yeah. like you have um, – but I think that should be the case in, in the open, too. They should want to have a, a balanced physique. But yeah. they do have the option of just getting one body part fucking huge, you know, and, <laughs> and like <laughs> saying whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'd be the only the only difference I can think of that's really, really um, outstanding. Yeah. We did a, um, a reaction video to Ronnie Coleman's first video with Mitsuro. And this is back when he placed like last place at the Olympia. And uh, it was right after that, a few weeks after. And oh my God, dude. Like he had, like you, you can't, you could see the human being that was under all the muscle that he became. Like back then you could see like, oh yeah, he looks like he's actually a human being. I can see the skeletal structure, all that. But his waist, man, back then yeah. was absolutely tiny. It was crazy, dude. And it's, I think, I mean, obviously that's important. It's with classic, so like, the waist is definitely important as well. I think it's it's technically it's supposed to be important in open as well. And for obviously for a period it wasn't, but I think it's gotten back to that when you got, you know, Derek, Hadi, Samson all hitting vacuums on stage. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. So like I was saying at the beginning, we're gonna uh we're gonna chat about posing and, and, and do some critiques and and one of the reasons I wanted to do this and get with you is because like I said you're a guy who has a lot of passion about posing. You know, there's some guys who just walk out there and they're like, yeah, I don't really care about the routine. I hit a couple most musculars, put my hand, cut my hand to the ear and then hit a couple more, <laughs> you know, and some people that it's that's just not their passion, but for you, it's been a passion. Um, 
I wanted to ask you a few questions about this first. One was, what would you say are three to five good ingredients for a, a like a good posing routine? Hmm. Good pose routine. I would say one would be the biggest thing is you got to feel the mu- the music. Like if the music's boring, um, if you don't like it, or if the music's boring, the, the crowd isn't gonna like it. That's very important. Uh, it's probably one of the most important things. Um, let's see. Number two would be to. This is hard for a lot of people, <laughs> but to to try to sync your your poses up with the music, you know. Um, I wish I need. I wish I understood music like the different words for music, but there's yeah. certain things like you want to stick to like the tempo of the song with the poses. Um, if you're really really good, you can match like some of your movements with the words of the song to kind of give the same emotion. So like if they're saying I'm reaching towards the sky, you do something where you put your hands up or you like you do like a a victory pose or something, you know. If you got the muscle uh, to do it, don't do it if you don't if have you arms. <laughs> That's another thing too. I would definitely that, that we can add that to a degree. Don't hit poses that don't that you don't have the muscle for. Yeah, I think personally my routines have gotten better because I've been able to like hit more poses because I look better in more poses after gaining some more size. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The more the better you look, the more shots you can hit. You know, yeah, um, it gives you variety. Um, and that comes up to the next one. Like, you need variety in your in your posing routines as well. Um. I try not to repeat too many poses. I try not to repeat poses more than like twice most of the time. Sometimes mm. I might hit something three times, but it's very, very rare. Um, but yeah, you definitely want a lot of variety, whether you can hit like, um, and on top of that, variety wise, like posing in different planes. And what I mean by that is like hitting shots, like standing you know, forward, hitting shots, doing a lunge, mm. hitting a shot, doing something kneeling, to something you know facing the rear just the more you can change like how you are in like space the better yeah i'd agree with all that stuff it, it, it kind of took me back i remember my first show i loved the side chest and side try those were like my two shots and, and yeah. as long as i was in those shots i felt like i looked like a bodybuilder but you took me out of those shots and man it, it was a mess i wouldn't <laughs> want to show you those pictures <laughs> But you're right. The, the further along you go, the more progress you make, the the more poses you have in your repertoire, the better you look at at different angles. You're you're the king too of of like what I'll call the non pose. You know how to you know how to take a picture. Like you've got the one with the hands on the chest, that thing you do. Yeah. And it's like that I I call those like the non poses, you know. I remember seeing uh at, at Highland Park, the original Detroit powerhouse, they have an old picture that I can't find anywhere of Casey Viador standing on a beach, and he's just kind of like flexing his forearm. And everything else, it, it's like it doesn't look like he's posing, but it's it's perfect. Just the angles he has, the way you the way you twist your waist, the way you show your quad, you just put your dimensions in such a, a position that you create a really cool. You know, you 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 present your strengths even though you're not really doing much. You know. No, nah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that's another thing. Like, um, like I studied a lot of bodybuilders back in the day and, and that and that pose you talked about in particular with like the hands on the chest. Like Francis, that, the first guy I saw do that was Francis Benfado. Huh. But the only difference is he I always have my my leading arm on my chest. Yeah. He, he has his, um, the back arm usually on his chest. And um, sometimes in posing, you have to kind of change things because for me if i had my front arm just laid out my arm isn't just doesn't look impressive just like hanging there <laughs> so i had to switch it up you know um yeah. same with the way i the way i've done like the victory pose like i could never hit it just head on like surge oliva yeah uh, senior uh because i don't have his his um arms his forearms his, his shoulder waist ratio yeah, a few people have it. those arms those are crazy yeah arms. yeah I mean, you see the way he hits it versus even the way Frank Zane hits it. It's completely different, you know? Yeah. So just being able to, like, modify things to kind of also, like, make it look best for your physique is important. Yeah. Yeah, that makes total sense to me. What What about off-season? Do you think guys should be – guys? well, I say guys, but I mean everybody. Do you think people should be working on their posing in the off-season too? 
I definitely think so. I mean, like, just the more you, the more time you spend practicing something, um, the better you'll get. Then out there, like, <clears throat> it's really a good time to like work on transitions because, because mm. like, um, you'll still have to practice a lot when you're leaning because certain things pop a little. You can see certain things move and pop when you're leaning that you can't in the off season. But being able to like hit the poses, like the shape right, being able to contract your muscles. And uh, being able to, to do certain transitions, you can all practice in all season, no problem. Like, um, and the big thing is like being able to contract certain muscles, and that's some that's something that takes like months. Like, uh, some guys they have a hard time flexing their glutes, their hamstrings, their rectus femoris, their obliques. Those are the big ones. Yeah, and they think they can fix it in a couple weeks, and you really can't. Like, that's something like it's very like it takes a very long time to build up that mind muscle connection. Yeah. Um, it took me like a year because I had re- a really hard time with my obliques and it took like a year of, of, of effort to really be able to hit those um, every single time I need to hit them. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I could see that for sure. You know, people don't realize it until they actually get started, just how difficult it is to hit everything and also look relaxed and have like you're having a good time at the same time. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. And then I got one for you here. So. You know, obviously, man, when you got started, you're you're old enough to have gone back to the point where to find bodybuilding information, you had to dig. You know, I, 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 it was an honor to have you listening to the old programs, Advices Radio, way back in the day. You know, it's been years now. But at the time, it, it was difficult. Like you, if you wanted to find out information about bodybuilding, you had to do research. Today, if you have a phone and you have Instagram or TikTok or anything else – you'll be inundated with just so much information coming left, right from every level. Guys who have been, uh, you know, champ is at the Arnold to guys who have literally never been on stage in their lives. They're all giving you information and it's hard yeah. to pick out, you know, what to listen to, what not. So the question though is what is the most overrated and then also the most underrated posing tips that are promoted today? Um, <clears throat> I would say the most underrated is like the one that we just spoke about is like really taking time in the off season to build up mind muscle connection. Um, it's crazy. I still see pros. They can't flex their rectus femoris, like the little part of your quad that's in the middle, upper middle quad. Mm. And they, I see it all the time. I was like, you, you can't flex your legs, you know, um, or the hamstrings. I've seen pros that can't flex their hamstrings. And I'm like, this is really, really crazy that uh, you're professional, you, you don't have this ability. I think, <clears throat> and like I said, like that only comes from like very concentrated effort, like for a very long time. Hmm. Um, outside of that, um, that was the most underrated, most overrated, but I would say there'd probably be two. Okay. One would be like, I've talked with some judges about this and like um, people sometimes get overly concerned with like, people uh the way a shot looks from a certain angle but i'm like if you don't you, ideally that's what you want to do though but if you realize like only one judge is going to see you from that angle mm. uh every other judge is going to get a very a more and more skewed version of how you're looking from a, a certain spot um unfortunately that's just the way it is especially at at, at pro shows is a little better because there's more distance from the stage so it's not as like skewed but like it mm. A lot of amateur shows, they're very close to the stage and it's, it's going to look a little weird. Um, and then on top of that, like at the beginner level, this is probably the, this is probably the, 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 the best one. Um, at the at the beginning level for a lot of people competing, it's definitely important for them to have like some basic concepts and rules to follow when it comes to posing. But I think sometimes at the higher level, people get too overly concerned with like, you're, you know, you need to be doing this, this, and this in your shot. And it starts to vary a lot more and more um, from person to person mm. based on the structure. Like, um, I saw one guy critiquing a pro a while, a while ago about, oh, he should hit his pose this way. And I'm like, this guy in particular poses a lot. So I was like, he probably tried that. He's probably, and it didn't work for him, you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I think that's probably the biggest thing. So, like, I now when I do, I don't do a lot of posing coaching anymore. Okay. But um, when I did, you know, I would try some. I would say, hey, try this out because normally this works. 
And if it didn't look good, then I would change it. But I wouldn't make him say that because stay in that pose just because um, some arbitrary rule of like, oh, you need to do this, this and this to, to look, you know, a certain way. Based on a person's like like structure, how their muscle belt, how their muscles insert, how they're shaped, a certain pose needs to be hit slightly different from person to person, you know. Yeah, and sometimes you can't tell, like you said, until you actually try it on. Because I I've you know worked with people where I say, hey, you know, why don't we try like like something doesn't look perfect? I say, hey, try twisting your foot this way. And then we try and say, oh, never mind. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, never mind. I do that all the time. And uh, some people, they'll live and die by like certain rules. They're like, oh, this is how you have to do this. And this is like, ah. Eh. Yeah. I don't know. So what's yeah. the what's the posing academy? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it is a posing course. So I have about 57 videos uploaded right now, taking people through everything I know about posing from – uh, quarter turns, mandatories, how to build a posing routine. I break down certain posing routines I've done myself and kind of give them reasons why I did certain things. Nice. I talk about the a little bit of the science behind posing as well, like like different um, things you need to consider anatomy wise um, to pose a little bit better. Because it's a, it's a little bit of both sometimes. Like you, it's definitely an art, but you definitely need to know like how your muscles contract to like contract them sometimes. You know. Yeah. Um, I also have a forum where people can send their their posing videos, and I'll just critique them through like a Loom, so I can send them a Loom video. Oh, cool! To, it's like a I don't know how to explain. It. Like me, rec- I'm like recording the video. Yeah, yeah, I know what yeah. Loom is. I think <laughs> most people do. You see a little Terrence overlaid your video when you when you send your video into him, and there you go. Yeah, that's cool, man. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, so. Yeah. So somebody could sign up for that. Say, uh, say I'm getting ready for a show at the end of the season. I could be like, hey, I'm going to commit to signing up to this for the next few months. And mm-hmm. you basically could go through all the videos, learn from you, number one, but then also get critiques, kind of like we're critiquing still pictures here today, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That would be pretty cool, yeah. Uh, I enjoy it a lot, too. It's a lot of fun. What's the? I'll put the link down below, but for anybody who is interested, what's the URL for that? URL. Um, it'll be on my website, roughdiesel.com. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. And click posing, and then it'll be the posing academy. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, listen, I'm going to grab a few of these pictures. And so I, I basically, I got some of these guys sent me everything they had, like every shot. And we, we can't go through literally every picture uh, everybody sent us. But what would you say would be uh, some important shots, like front double, rear double, uh, front relax? What, are, what do you think would be like a, a, a good – are, let me ask you this. I mean, There's more questions, I guess. But what do you say your most important shots are to be good at on stage? My thought has always been front relaxed is important because it's the first thing they see. And then sure. front double is important because that's kind of like the first actual pose where you can kind of yeah. tweak things and they see that, you know? I definitely think, yeah, I definitely think first important, uh, first impressions are important. Um, I think to keep it fun though, if we could do three, like a uh, a front, side, and back pose, that'd be great. Um, All right, cool. All yeah. Right. Hey guys, so I'm seeing that like 35% of you are not subscribed to the channel, which on one hand is great. That means that YouTube is getting us in front of new people. On the other hand, that means that we might not see each other again if you don't hit the subscribe button. We have several bodybuilding podcasts each week. We've got our reaction videos. We're doing YouTube shorts. So let me encourage you right now to subscribe and hit the bell. And if you're enjoying this show, then please hit the like button and leave us a comment. That stuff goes further than... Here's a here's a front shot. This is... What's his name here? This is Jerry. And I want to start with him. I think he's got some incredible potential here. I'll, uh, I'll grab a few shots here and throw them up. So here's one of his front shots. Front double. Let's see what Jerry's got us from the rear. I'll throw in the rear double. And. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Let me see if I can grab the. What do we got here? Here's a. Looks like a side. Sent us a side relaxed. And yeah, let me see what his other side looks like. All right. They're both about the same. It's You notice how some people have like their. They look different. On from the, the left to the right, depending on their flexibility. But For it looks sure. like both of his shots are about the same. 
So here's three of Jerry's shots then. Okay. Um, I'll start with the <clears throat> we'll start we'll go left to right, why not? Uh is he did he does he say what class he's on from Let's see what class he says. Here. Let's see what he says here. He says, um, I'll compete in a few weeks. Um he said he couldn't pass up this opportunity, but he doesn't say what class he's gonna be in. Okay. Um, well, let's start with the, the front double. Um, I think his structure is fantastic, man. Um, to be honest with you, the, the only thing that he could possibly, um, improve on in this shot would, might be to either raise his arms a little bit. We mm. saw Tyler talking about this with Ramon, um, the way he was posing at the Arnold. That could give him a little bit more of a peak and a little bit more lats, possibly, and maybe even bringing his elbows like an inch or two forward, um, that might actually give him a little bit fuller of a chest. Um, that would be the main things with this shot. Personally, I think he could um, do like a tilted thing as well. That could look good. Um, that's like, It's funny. Um, even if he's doing bodybuilding, people say, oh, you know, um, the posing is different. Yeah. It's, 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 not, it's not that different. I mean, like, Every pose I've learned, I've learned from a bodybuilder, Lee Labrada, Kai Green, all these guys. Yeah. You got guys, Samson, who still, you know, has an aesthetic front double bicep, Cedric um, McMillan did, all these guys. So um, I think that could definitely work, man. I think this isn't bad at all because his structure is, like, really, really, like, nutty. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but but overall, I, I think um, if he could play around with some of the stuff up top, it could potentially look a little bit better. Okay. What do you think of the, that stance in general, how he's got, he's just kind of squared up uh, from the, in the bottom, you know, legs are just kind of symmetrical straight on like that. I think it's fine. Is it great? No. Like um, I think judges appreciate like um, adding a little bit more, like twisting up a bit, putting the leg out, you know, um, yeah. kind of like what they call classic now. Um, I think they definitely uh, appreciate that. You hit that hard too in your shots. Like you really, you really do. You get, you get that. Well, I think too, it, you already have a small waist, but then it, I think it accentuates it even further, you know? Oh, for sure. For sure. So I, I definitely think I would prefer if he, he added some more flair to his posing. All right. Um, but like this very basic traditional way is it's, it's not wrong technically, but it, it could definitely, you know, I think it could definitely be better. Yeah. All right, let me jump to this one then. So here's his rear double. Rear double. All right. Um, let's see. This actually looks pretty, pretty good. Um, only I, I would like to see maybe a little bit more bend at the elbow. That might give him a little bit more peak. Another thing, um, if he can like uh, rotate his arm a bit further back. Yes. That yeah. Help. That'll definitely help with that that bicep as well. Um, he seems to be his back seems to be in a good spot overall. Like he's not pinched. Um, yeah. So now this is, it seems to be fine. That's uh, a mistake I see people make a lot is they they go to hit that rear double and then they pinch it because you want to feel something squeeze. You know what I mean? And you can oh, yeah. squeeze that together, right? <laughs> definitely, definitely. So you definitely don't want that. You want to be as wide as you can. You should have detail there without pinching, for sure. Yeah. All right. Let me bring up his side shot here. This is probably the, the one I would change a little bit more than the others. Um, you don't want to have that, that um, delt so high. You want to be mm. more parallel. Um, one that's going to make you look wider across the board. Um, oh, that was another thing. People often say you need to, like, Oh, <laughs> people say you need to like really angle a lot for the judges, which really um, isn't the case. And most of the things, so like when I talk about things concerning judges is because I've, I've spoke with several, you know, yeah. Um, and yeah, they don't really need you to like bend like that to, uh, I don't know why. Yeah. I don't want to, yeah, I don't know, but yeah, you don't need to do that. Okay. <laughs> so definitely, um, he should be a look drop this elbow that drop this uh delt a bit this back delt so it can appear a little bit wider 
Um, I think if he did that too, it would um, bring his arm a little bit further back so he's not covering up his glute. Mm. Um, overall, uh, everything else is good. He's contracting his obliques really nicely, um, you know, flexing that rear pec. Um, legs are pushed together to show off the hamstring. And um, you'll see this a lot of times with people that they'll stagger their feet a bit. And that can kind of help have the illusion of um, just making your legs look a little bit bigger. So, yeah, I think we're going to probably run into this too, Terrence, that if people are sending us their pictures, they're willing to have you critique them and they're willing to have them put on a podcast. They're probably pretty confident already in what they're doing. You know what I mean? We'll get some yeah. guys that are just crazy. They're like, hey, can you do a physique critique for me? And they're like, they're just nutty a lot of times. You know, it's like, there's nothing to critique here, man. You look great. Teach me something. Great. Yeah. All right. So this guy had a specific question here. Let me bring the picture up first. He's got a front relaxed. And this dude's got some incredible wheels on him. Yeah. That's the first thing. yeah. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. What does he say here? He says, um, all right, this is Dennis. He says, hey, Scott, big fan of the show. Um, and, and he loves all the reactions. It's just bodybuilding and hanging out with Big Dave. He said, uh, thanks for being an incredible person and host. Well, thank you very much. And he said, uh, let's see. He's been a big fan of you, Terrence, for about five years. He said, I saw him at the Mr. Olympia 2022 posing routine at Dragon's Lair. About oh. said, he said he's watched that now about 40 times. Oh, I appreciate um, it. Literally art of the human body. He said, I, I saw Ruff Diesel in person at a posing class in New York City a few years ago. I remember just thinking, this guy is as wide as a fridge. <laughs> he said this is an absolute honor so he had a question in here um okay he says i don't know if in the front shots to bring the sternum and chest up getting the elbows and lats to flare out a bit or have the elbows and arms a bit lowered I don't think I have the front lat development yet to have the elbows and arms lowered lol so I wish he would have sent us like a, a version of both. That would make it a lot easier. Yeah, um, that's true. <laughs> but um, if I feel like if he raised his, you know, chest up a bit more, um, since his chest doesn't seem to be like a strong point, it, it, it could possibly make it look even worse. And especially like his delts as well. Mm. I feel like that might be an issue he could run into if he raised his chest too much higher. Yeah. Um, where he is right now looks fine. I think, I think overall he just needs to get oh, overall. He just needs to balance his upper with his lower a lot more. Yeah. He's going to run to some issues no matter what until that's kind of more symmetrical. But um, that would be my, my first thought is if he raised this up, he might, he may have a bit more lats, but then all of the, everything up top is going to look a lot smaller. Yeah. Check this back shot out. He said a rear relax too. His lats look a lot bigger from the back. Oh, for sure. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, I wouldn't yeah. think that that was what his lats looked like based off of what we're seeing him show us from the front. It's because he's, he's, um, he's rounding his back here and he's... Mm. And, and, Front shot. He's uh, he's more. I guess more neutral. I would say. Yeah, yeah. What do you think of? I see this a lot. Um, I see a lot of, especially newer guys, in that front shot. Those arms keep coming up higher and higher to the point that they they look like they're riding a like a an old Harley. You know, with the big handlebars. <laughs> what does that do to the physique when you do that? Um, oh man, you know, they, that was a big thing back in the day. They said, don't ride the, the motorcycle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I think people do it because they think they're going to get more lats or something where I'm like, at a certain point, you're not going to get more lats. You don't, the more you raise your arm, it doesn't work that way. But, um, one, it just, it, it throws off the look of the physique, the symmetry of the physique. Um, Typically, what I like to see is like, you know, you flare your lats and then you just let your arms rest on top of it. Yes. And then you you kind of match the angle of your your forearm to the angle of your lat. Okay. So that's typically what 
what I like to see. So you want to do the best you can to rotate down. Mm. And the thing is too, this goes into like the science of, of posing, which I have in my course. Um, me and Joe did a lot of something called FRC, uh, functional range conditioning, hmm. where you you work on like building strength in the end ranges of motion. And the more you do that, the more you have the ability to kind of hit these shots where your arm is a little bit more down or like say, for instance, I'm doing a back double and now I can bring my arms further back. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, it's actually super, super helpful. And it, on top of the the posing benefits, it's, it's like it helps with injury prevention as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I could see that. And you bring something up that I think is really valuable. Um, it, it, like our last guy in that side shot, you know, he, he didn't have like much twist going on. And, and I think yeah. some of that can be flexibility. You know what I mean? So that's another bit. Yeah. So I've done, especially with a lot of the twisting shots I've done, I've done a lot of like FRC training to kind of build up that, that mobility, that range of motion um, in those shots. So sometimes posing isn't just like, a, you're not, sometimes posing is more of a, um, like you said, a flexibility and mobility issue rather than you just hitting the shot wrong. Some people just can't get into it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's great insight. All right, let me see what else we have here. And I hope that helps you, brother. Let's see. So, all right, where's, where's this one? So this is a client of Skip's. His name is Tommy. He's obviously in bodybuilding. He uh, watches all the shows. I saw him at Swiss. He came out to Swiss this year. A lot of muscle. Yeah. Bro, but like I'm always like a couple weeks out from competing. <laughs> I know, time. man. I know. Yeah. Uh, he's got some crazy calves. Yes. I would say biggest thing for him is um, his arms are actually a little bit too high. I would say. Mm. Um, yeah, especially that right one. Yeah, right one. Okay. Uh, he could possibly. I can't tell, but if if some people sometimes when they hit their their front double, they're um, they raise up their shoulders like this, and you can act, just make sure you press those down because that's going to give you a little bit more thickness in your lats. Oh. Um, it's hard, kind of hard to tell, but other than that, um, just twisting his his uh, his arms a bit more. They're more like here. Oh it's yeah, yeah. What's that going to do for you? It's going to give you more of a bicep peak. Um, I definitely he's got very long biceps, so definitely twisting he could he could afford to. Uh, to twist them a bit more to get a little bit more of a peak there yeah i could see that i could see that and with those arms like not quite as high up i feel like that's gonna make them look wider for sure for sure yeah so i'd love to see it i'd love to see that on him let's see what else he has here i think he may have sent um oh here's a side shot yeah this might be a twisting issue here as well man okay. those guys and then he's yeah. foot's up in the air. So definitely want to let's start from the legs. So you definitely want to be having this foot pressed into the ground. Um, a lot of times what you'll see is you'll start to get some uh, detail in the size it requires there, mm. some striations. So that's definitely going to be something important. Um, and a little bit more detail in his, he's, yeah, he could flex his calf if he presses into the ground a little bit better. So a little bit, a little bit more detail there. Um, a lot of times I look at hips. His hips look fine. Uh, but the big thing is he's not rotated quite as much as I would like for him to see. Um, I would like to see. Okay. Uh, so you're so saying like it. twist that upper body around a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So um, same way how people like ideally how you want to twist in your side relax, you kind of want the same thing here. You want to be wide, very wide up, uh, up top. A lot of times some people turn this into a bicep pose. Mm. Um. But yeah, he definitely needs to twist a lot more, be a lot wider up top here. All right. Yeah, I think those are all fair assessments. You mentioned um, you were going to start from the start from the the floor, start from the bottom up. I I had heard in the past people talk about posing from the floor up. Is that the way you would suggest to do things in general? Yeah, that's that's how it's been taught over like forever. I would imagine. Um, I definitely think that's important. Yeah, even when I'm setting into poses, like, yeah, you set your feet, and then everything else comes after that. The only problem I find is sometimes people struggle to maintain that that uh, 
like their legs. Like you'll see sometimes you'll see people posing and they'll they'll set up their feet and then they'll bring the upper body into it and then their, their legs will go. Like no no uh, detail, no contraction, you know, they lose their legs. Yeah. So, yeah. I've seen that. I felt that myself. It's a it's a process, I think. All right, he's got a back shot here too. Here's a rear double. This is a nice shot on him too. You can tell yeah. he's a you can tell he's a guy who lifts heavy just by looking at his physique, you know? Yeah, he's very, very <laughs> round muscle belt. Especially I keep looking at the calves, man. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> Holy moly. Uh okay, let's start. I think he could possibly be a little bit um higher up. Like he's he's squatting a little bit too much. Okay. I like the posing, like um, you know, how we're taught like growing up body language, you know, the the taller you can stand, you know, the more proud you look and things like that. Mm. Um I'm like zooming in a bit. So it looks like he's flexing his hamstrings. I see a um a line here and this one, a line here and that one. So his hamstrings are are um flexing. They possibly could be a little bit more detail there, but it's hard to say. Okay. Um, but there's at least some tension there. Yeah. Um, it seems as though he's pushing his hips back. Mm. Um, it's a little hard to tell with him not like being super lean, but that's what it seems like. I would agree with you. Um, so ninety uh, percent of the time, like I've I like from what I've seen, the way the judges have called this and. So when I talk about judging, I, I always I'm always referring to like a lot of like like Tyler, Sandy, Steve. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, they can't be at every single show. And some judges at the local level are gonna it's gonna vary a lot more, to be honest with you. But their the, their judging is the standard, so I always try to base it off of what they they've done and what they've said at seminars and things like that. Um, so hips back. If you if you're shredded and you have shredded glutes, um, they want you to push them forward. They want to get as much detail as you can. There's been every single like reason like people have lots of reasons. Like Ian, he put his hips back because he had more hamstring thickness from the back shot. Mm. Um, the judge told him they didn't like that. Um, Urs did it at some point as well. I think I don't know what the reason was. It was either for the the uh, the inner thigh thickness. That's the word I'm looking for. And, uh. or, um, or sometimes people will do it to get a little bit more in their lower back. Um, ideally, if you're shredded enough, they don't like that. On like, like if you, yeah, definitely the most recent cases are. If you go and look at his early uh, Olympia placings to like the most recent, he's definitely changed that up okay. since then. And it was because of, of feedback from the judges. Um, the only time I would say <laughs> it might be a good idea to push your hips back is if. You're not lean enough. You have no striations in your glutes, and it looks better for you. It just, yeah. I was like, well, then, yeah, go for it. Then it's not going to matter either way, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not going to matter either way. So you might as well get something out of it. Um, What you'll find, too, is a lot of people, so a stretch muscle is harder to contract. So when you push those hips back, um, you'll, you'll a lot of times find it harder to contract your hamstring. So just be aware of that as well. You might need to find a happy medium. Um, with like where you you place your hips and these poses. That makes total sense. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's see what else we can find here. Like I said, we had a, a bunch of them that people sent to us. Um, all right, Michael Devereaux. So this is a master's guy. He has his own home gym, which he's, uh, he's shared with us before. In fact, these pictures are in his home gym. I'm gonna throw up a front relaxed first here. Man, this, so he's in Indiana, I believe, out in the country. And he has literally a pole barn with wow. all the latest like uh, prime equipment and arsenal, like everything you could think of. He's got it all right there, literally feet from his home. That's really nice. Really, really nice. Yeah. Um, posing wise with him, like I like just a, like a, it's not going to make a huge difference in your physique. It's just like a, what's the word? Like a preface thing for the sport is they want like palms down instead ah. of like neutral. Yeah. Um, overall, this pose looks pretty good for him. The only thing I, he may not be lean enough, but um, another muscle that people have issues contracting is their satorius muscle. That muscle that kind of goes from like 
like the inner part of the like on the inner part of the teardrop muscle and it goes all the way up all the way up and attaches it like the hip you know what i'm okay. talking about the yeah. thigh um what i find a lot of times to help people contract that is to maybe internally think about driving the knee up like to the chest like i would and um that'll help a lot of people flex like the rectus femoris and sartorius muscles um that'll be the only thing um this looks pretty good this looks like a pretty good shot yeah yeah i think it does let me see what else we have here uh i'll run through a couple of these real quick then here's his front double i just saw that front relax and i was like hey that's pretty impressive i gotta bring that one up yeah um he's i think the biggest thing for him is this he's gonna have to bring up these legs a bit um because mm. his upper body is like huge yeah um his legs aren't bad at all. <laughs> they just, it's just his, uh, his, his, his shoulder width is just really, really, uh, really big. Yeah. Yeah. He does have structurally too, like a really nice frame to put on a lot of muscle. So it, it makes sense. He does. And then on top of it, he's got a bunch of muscle. So up top, he does look really wide. I can see what you're saying. I wonder how much of it is a camera angle thing too, or it, it does look pretty straight on, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's what. Uh, yeah, definitely looks pretty um, straight on uh, to me. Mm, no, just the same. Pretty much the same critiques as uh, before. Okay, but uh, yeah, no, definitely good, good shot. If you talk to Robbie Robinson, he, he's very picky. He likes to say tuck your thumbs in. Mm. I don't. Know, that's just like a preface thing. I don't think okay. it's. I don't really care that much about it. I don't think I've ever done that before. <laughs> He's yeah, dude. He used to be on my page every other day saying, "Tuck those dogs." Oh yeah, he was telling you what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome, man. And then here's his rear shot, rear double. Okay, cool. I, I see some some stuff here. So he's big thing here is the upper body. Um, yeah, if he can, he definitely seems to be a little tight up top. Um, it seems like his elbows are a little bit more forward, ah. and um, he can't. Um, rotate as far back as I would like for him to, and that's gonna. He's gonna have to do some like I, like I talked about earlier FRC stuff to get those range the active range back. Yeah, uh, he could. I mean, he could potentially. I wouldn't want him to like squeeze his back anymore because I feel like he'll lose too much width if he did that. Huh. Um. But yeah, yeah, I definitely think he can use a little bit more. Um, being able to bring that arm back and further and and uh, further back there. Okay. Yeah, I can uh, see that. I can see that up top. That makes a lot of sense to me. It looks like these are off season too. I think he's in pretty good shape for off season right now. You know, he can lean back just a bit at the mm. hips. Okay. Too. Um. So that's the hard thing to teaching people. Like, I'm not saying for him to like arch his back. Yeah. But like he could like from the from the hips down, lean back a bit more. Okay. Yeah. So that way his his back is still um like kind of the same. Yeah. But he's just back a little bit more. Yeah. Yep, I could see that for sure. I've seen people take that to like a real big exaggeration. I think you were kind of getting at that earlier. You know, you hear people say, like, well, the judges are below you. Yeah. So you you want to pose like this, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, the biggest thing, I, and that's what I preach. Like Tyler is honestly, dude. Like, to be honest, I was a little worried when Tyler first came to bodybuilding because, like, you know, though this is his first job, whatnot. You know, it's a little strange, but yeah. he's fantastic. He's honestly fantastic, and like, so one of his things he likes to tell people is, um, you don't like, you don't need like, we're not dumb. Like, if you take a step forward, we we know that, and we know how to judge accordingly. Uh, but everyone in your mom is like, you know, you need to take it. You know, if someone steps forward, you step forward. And I'm like, what Tyler actually tells me is like, if someone's stepping forward, you just take a step back and just pose. Hmm. You know, I was like, oh, that's actually nice. Yeah. You know, that I have to deal with that. Yeah. No kidding, man. Yeah. People get aggressive up there. Have you have you had moments up there where you felt like some? I don't want you to have to. I'm not putting you on the spot here to call anybody out. But at the big shows, man, that's a lot of pressure. And you can all be friends even up to the backstage yeah. point. But when you get on stage, man, there's there's have you felt that yourself at big shows like the Arnold? Um, no, nah, not so much. I think so every I feel like every division has their own like 
culture. You know what I mean? I feel like Kaisa guys are really, really chill. Yeah. And um, and uh, <laughs> sometimes people aren't aware of like their space. So like they'll do these wild like arm movements, and then I'm like, oh <laughs> shit, bro! Like, <laughs> in the face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but overall, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty chill. <laughs> do you? Uh, yeah. What when you're back there? When you're you're getting ready? You know, you know you're going to be going out soon. Do mm-hmm. you get nervous at all, or how do you how do you handle that? Because I I've I've seen people handle it all sorts of different ways. But what are, what's going through your head when you're backstage and getting ready to do either the show or your routine's really important to you when you're getting ready to do your routine? How are you feeling? So I wouldn't I wouldn't say I'm nervous. I get more anxious. Like I, I hate the the waiting around. I, I would rather just, just let me go do this. You know I hate I hate the waiting every single time. That's the worst. Um, but what I do to keep my, to try to keep myself calm is I listen to a lot of like, uh, relaxing music. I listen to like stuff that kind of chills me out and keeps my heart rate low. Okay. Know? Cause yeah, I, I try not to like amp myself up and then my heart rate's beating really quickly. And I'm like, it's just very uncomfortable for me. So yeah. I do anything I can to keep myself relaxed, uh, backstage. You know, when I first get backstage, I'll say, Hey to everyone, you know, be nice. I'm like, you know, I'll shake everyone's hands. I'll say, what's up? And then, for, you know, then after that, I just kind of put my headphones on and just chill out by myself. Um, I learned this kind of from Chris. Like, uh, I remember one year I saw everybody pumping up and I saw Chris just relaxing. And it's only worse for like really big shows. But um, I was like, that's weird. So I just kind of chilled out, too. And I wait for him to start pumping up. <laughs> <laughs> he started. So I started. Yeah. And then I realized I'm like, oh, this is this makes a lot of sense because um if you get a smaller show, this doesn't work. You know, you want to look your best as soon as you go out. But for the bigger shows where you know Steve or Tyler is gonna have us out there several times doing several uh rounds of posing, uh. you have a little bit of a pump, you're good, you'll you all you're gonna look good no matter what. You know, you're lean, we're at the Olympia. Yeah. But then you start to look a little bit better as you pose because then that's kind of like you actually pumping up, you know, going through each round of posing. So where a lot of times people pump up too much and they'll start to fade. Um, I, I guess the guys that pump up a little bit less than me and Chris, we start to get a little bit better as the posing goes on, you know? Yeah. But sometimes after a lot, you know, we go through like the individual, the, the, um, what do you call it? The, the, um, the first rounds of posing, then they bring out the, the first call outs, then they'll bring, they'll tell us to wait a bit. Then yep. they'll bring out the first, first call out, like the, the, you know what I mean? Like the top yep. three or two people. So like, it definitely makes sense. Cause, um, I, my first, my first Olympia or maybe second, I can't remember. No, it was the third one. I was out there for like four call outs. And by the, t- the end of I it, remember I remember that. Like, yeah. I was, <laughs> I had faded and that was because I was start out. Like they kept putting me out there and I was fading, fading, fading. Yeah. It's simply getting worse. So, yeah, they worked uh, you hard that year too. We were we were there just right outside the press pit watching you. And uh, like, are you all right? They asked me. I was there, like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, that would be another big thing. Um, advice wise would be like, you want to be able to do more than what you require. You know, posing wise. Yeah. Just in case something like that happens, you want to be able to like not just be able to get through the required amount, but to get through it and and it'd be easy. You know, and look easy. Yeah. 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 That's, that's the tough part, man, is, is being able to stay that calm, cool, relaxed. It, it was cool to see too. Once you started nipping at Chris's heels, I saw him like, at least from the public perspective, he like he took a shine to you. You know what I mean? It's, and, 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 and that's what I think might be different than some of the other classes. It's like, I could see you guys bond over that. And I, I as a fan, I thought that was really cool to see. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, I was there at Chris's first show, so I've known him. Uh, me, well, I've known, I guess, out of everyone competing, we've competed the longest together. I've competed with him the longest, and I've also competed with Brian the longest because uh, yeah, Brian was at my first pro show, and I was at Chris's first pro show. So we're like one of the last people um, that's been doing this for like you know the, we've been doing this the longest out of anybody. So it's <laughs> it's pretty crazy. That is yeah. wild. And, and it's changed so much so fast. I'm sorry. Go ahead. What were you gonna no, say? That, but um, yeah. And this is Brian's last year doing classic, apparently. So, mm. um, 
Yeah, it's, it's it'll be I'll be the oldest guy on stage. That soon. doesn't yeah, that doesn't seem right to me, man. It's crazy how fast the the division changes. I guess it makes sense. It's a young division, but it's evolved so much, even even from the time that you started. What do you think of it today compared to what it was back when you started? I think one I, I love like um, we get a lot more respect um, mm. across the board. I remember the first year of class at like. They didn't even like. I don't think they even recorded it. So that I mean, even the Olympia didn't care. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> there's very few footage of the first Olympia uh, for classic. Um, the the older um, open bodybuilders didn't really respect us very much. Now I see like it honestly shocked me the first time I saw like Victor Mar- Victor Martinez went up and said hey to me. I was like, okay. I'm like I'm supposed to be coming up and <laughs> saying hey to you. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's a lot more respect there, which is really cool. Um, yeah, and then the physiques, the physiques are way different. Um, I'm, I was talking about this on a forum the other day. I think there's maybe one or two guys from the first Olympia that could, um, uh, probably win a pro show still like, like, like a decent pro show, you know, um, that Breon, I think could still win a, like his 2016 physique, I think could still win a pro show. Yeah. Maybe, maybe Robert Timms is. But he, I mean, Robert Timms today just lost to the uh, Korean. Well, Robert Timms' physique last year just lost to the Korean guy. So maybe just Breon, if that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so it a lot is of, wild. Yeah, yeah. It's insane. I mean, I forget what the weight cap was back then now, but uh, I feel like we're up like 20, 15, 20 pounds since, since then, you know? Yeah, it keeps going up. That's the other thing, too. You guys keep yeah. pushing it and you keep growing. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I think. I don't think it should go any higher than this. I mean, we already have guys that can uh, switch to 212 in a year. And, like, some guys that I, – I personally think Chris could win an open show. Um, yeah, that'd be wild. I don't, I don't think he would do too well at the Olympia, but I definitely – I mean, Regan, Regan has won a few pro shows. Like, um, I don't think Chris could beat Rafael Brando now, but Rafael Brando before the break, oh, yeah. I think he probably beat. And that Rafael won pro shows. So I definitely think it's – I don't think they need to be any bigger yet. Yeah. yeah, I think I'm with you. And and there's something to be said about having constraints, you know. I, I don't care what you're doing. To have some sort of, like, um, limitations to work with, and that forces you to get more creative, you know, no, you know, no matter what it is. And bodybuilding, like you said at the beginning of the show, it you, you only have so much room, so you have to be super critical – with where you're going to put any additional development in order to stay in your class. For sure. For sure. I a hundred percent agree. And I do think to a certain degree, it does um, help us come in um, with better conditioning. Yeah. Um, being able be, having to suck down like that definitely does. Yeah, yeah. It, it absolutely does. Same with 212, you know, otherwise like 212, those guys are always absolutely nasty peeled. They have to be, because they were like 235 the day before, you know, or I'm exaggerating, but you know what I mean? No, for, yeah, I get you. Yeah, yeah. I definitely think, and like, I, I love open, no, no, you know, there's, and there's definitely open guys that come in shredded, but I would, like you said, I think on average, um, classic and 212 on an average, they're leaner than the open guys. Yeah. Hey, I was looking over at your website and I saw you have merchandise. You've got posters and stuff now. Are those coming from your house? Are you sending those or do you have no, like a company? Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm uh, not good with I hate the post office. Yeah, that's the I would love to be able to do what Jay Cutler did, you know, and send out our t shirts from my garage, but I you'd be waiting months, guys, if you wanted to <laughs> wait on a think big t shirt. So I'm Yeah. I'm with you on that, man. So I, I mean, just I was love- Oh, go ahead. Oh, I said I would love to. And I think they do have the company I use. I think they do have an option for me to, um, like, say if I wanted to sign some and then I could ship them bulk to them and then they could still do the the uh, the, sh- the the shipping themselves. So I could probably do something like that. But no, it's not. It's not coming from my house. OK. Um, OK. I was just wondering. I was wondering if you got, you know, you get a, tear, a rough diesel autograph or something like that. If you order one of those posters, how that worked. All right. Well, listen, man, I think that was I think that was all the critiques I had. Let me check here. I had one guy. Unfortunately, I couldn't get his pictures open. Let me try one more time because I know it was uh, 
you know he had sent me a zip file and and it was real funky and well, wait a second here I think oh wait the other, oh did it work I, I got one to work i got one to okay. work what, what were you gonna say i was gonna talk while you got that try to figure it out oh <laughs> say i was gonna say i think classic has been a benefit to like um the open for sure i think uh i think Obviously, the waste thing, I don't think that's an issue anymore. I think for a couple of years, when I got started, everyone talked about the bubble cuts and whatnot. I don't think that's a thing anymore. I don't think, uh, even the like quote unquote mass monsters, like, like people give Nick a lot of shit. I love Nick because I mean, like, his, like, he might not have the prettiest physique, but like, he, his way, he keeps his waist very tight. Every, like, every single picture I see of him is, is fantastic. Yeah, he uh, does. The posing, I think, has, Gotten a little bit, gotten a little bit better, um, for sure. I've seen guys hire like uh, James Holland He's hired posing coaches to help him with routines. Um, obviously, Samson's awesome uh, with his his routines. Oh yeah, so I think on average things have gotten a little bit better. Even um, I love uh, John De La Rosa. I loved his routine at the Arnold. I oh, I did great. too. There were yeah, a lot yeah. of good routines at the Arnold Johns. And like you mentioned, James, he had a really cool routine. It was mm -hmm. like hard. He used like system of a down. It fit him perfectly. Antoine did a, a really like well choreographed pose good, that, yeah. you know, there's a lot of like visual to it. You know, I thought that was pretty it's fun. Very creative. Yeah. Yeah. Creative. That was the word I was looking for. Mm -hmm. All right. I do have this, this one more guy here. Let me see here. Here's a front double. We'll start with him. This will be our last one of the day here. We ran a little bit long here, so I appreciate you hanging with me, Terrence. I didn't realize we're going for over an hour now. I appreciate your time, man. <laughs> um, all right, all right, all right. He's he looks he looks like he's getting ready for a show too. Yeah, he's looking um, cool. I think the biggest thing. I think this is overall okay. Um, I think the biggest thing for him is just a little bit more size. Um, he's. Yeah, a little bit, uh, yeah, a little bit more size. I think the only thing I would say is he could possibly raise his arms a tad, not very, not not much, but maybe just a little bit, and that might give him a little bit more lats. Yeah. Um. Sometimes with posing, like f f to help people kind of understand things, I like especially with the front double and the the last running things. I tell them like, you want to feel like your lats or your your rhomboids are being like stretched. You, you want to feel a stretch there, so. Mm. If he's not feeling that shot, that could probably be um, a couple extra, I don't want to say inches, but a couple extra, like, let's just say inches, because like, I can't think of anything else right now. Right. A couple, some more size he can add to his lats. Yeah. I I could get that. And here's a side <laughs> shot of him. I think we might have done a critique of him before uh, on It's Just Bodybuilding. I, if I recall, he's a natural guy, too. Oh, okay, okay. Um. He needs to rotate a bit more. Um, I, I like to be able to see someone's uh, delt um, on oh, that yeah. back arm. There. Yeah, so that's the, that's the biggest thing there. I think he could rotate a tiny bit more um, to get that uh, like back arm's front delt to show. What do you think of that, the way he's holding that the rear arm? He's kind of got it like pulled around him almost, you know, where you see his fist like that. I don't mind that at all. I know some people, I think there's some people that don't, some posing coaches that don't like to have your arm bent. Yeah. But coming from a guy like myself that doesn't have the best um, uh, arm genetics, <laughs> uh, I like to have my bent because if I have it straight, it looks like a little noodle. Oh, you know what? So. I'm sorry. When I said back arm, I meant like, uh, I think we were talking about the other arm because you're talking about the arm behind the arm to the left of the screen. I mean, I mean, his right, his left arm, the one his that's... Yeah, the the one the arm further away from us is that the one you were talking about? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. From, 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 yeah. So yeah, I always have mine kind of bent um, similar similarly. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah, I definitely I, I think he needs to rotate a lot more. Um, he could probably bring that arm a little bit a little bit down though. Um, but I don't mind it being uh, bent like that at all. All right. Give me just a second here. I'm looking for one of his rear shots. I have to open them all up. While I'm looking for that, I'll throw this one up here. It's a really nice shot on him. Good side, good side try. This kid's in waist is incredibly small, you know? Yeah, he's got a, a very nice physique. Um, this looks very nice. This is 
typically what I want to see in the side tricep, hmm. um, especially in terms of like how he grips his, um, how his arm is, the arm that's showing. Sometimes you'll find the way people grip, they'll have a gap between like their glute and their, their hand. And I don't like to have a lot of empty space. So the way he's grabbing his arm um, is definitely nice. Um, he's showing his obliques. They look great. Abs are great. Um, yeah, everything looks really, really nice. All right. Here's that rear double that he sent us. Yeah, this kid's peeled, too, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks great, man. Yeah, this is actually a really, really nice. A lot of detail in his physique. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. Possibly a little bit higher with the arms. Um, hamstrings are everything. No, everything else looks um, really, really nice. Uh, yeah, I can't see a ton to complain about about that. Yeah, yeah. You see a little bit of his pecs from behind the way he's hitting that. You see that? Like the upper upper chest is kind of clavicles coming through there. He is lean pretty far back. Do you have any problem with that? Um it could it could be, it's hard to say. Um possibly. Yeah. The more you lean back, like some like I actually don't have a, a a really strong stance on this, but um yeah, he the way he's leaning back, it it kind of does make his legs look up bit smaller uh, just in, things closer to your eye appear bigger than things further away so with him leaning back yeah it'll definitely make his upper look a little bit bigger yeah um typically i mean this looks pretty good though i don't have a huge issue with it um i don't think it make it would make a huge difference um to the judges to be quite honest with you either i bet you're but, right and at the end of the the day too um like you said you're not you're not like there's no rules, right? So, yeah. you if you were working with him, say say that he was part of the posing academy, and you mm -hmm. say, "Hey, try this," and then he tries it and comes back, and it doesn't look better, they'd be like, "Hey, just don't do that anymore. That didn't work, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. You know, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, after like I think being around so long, like a lot of posing coaches, they go based on a hundred percent their own like opinion and thoughts. Yeah, um, I've like. I'll, obviously, I'll do that to a certain degree, but then I real I have the realization that I'm not a judge, you know. So I always try to talk to as many judges as I can. And after years of talking to different judges, I realize they all have slightly different opinions about certain things. Hmm. And um, some things are really just a preference thing, you know. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of posing coaches want to tell you that because they want to be like, my way is the right way, and I'm the only guy that can tell you how to do things. <laughs> it's a it's like it's a, it's a business, but <laughs> yeah. But I always be honest. I do like honestly. At the end of the day, it, like some things, some things are black and white, but some things are just preference, you know. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah. It gets even crazier when you get to bikini, as far as preference goes. Should yeah. she be a little bit harder? Should she be a little bit softer? Should she have blonde hair? Should she have brown hair? You hear like oh, all the girls are wearing blue suits this year, you know. <laughs> and it's it's true though, and that's but like that's. The reason why we have several judges because mm. all of them are like going to have very slight differences in opinion. Um, that's just how judging is with uh, with things like this, you know. Um, I think that makes it more fair because if everyone had the same train of thought, then you know maybe this guy only likes um, short biceps, and anyone with long biceps is it sucks, you know. Yeah. So you want you want some slight very like variances in opinion when it comes to judging, you know. Yep, not huge, nothing huge, but like some small changes here and there. You know, yeah, so I think it's. Good. I agree with that a hundred percent, man. Well, listen, you've been really generous with your time. I I appreciate you uh, hanging out here with us and and sharing your insights too. Like you said, man, you know you you've had the opportunity to talk to a lot of judges and your own experiences. Um, you know, so I, I, I'm really grateful that you were willing to share that with us. And I know that the listeners were too. everybody who messaged and sent pictures. They all were saying, hey, thank you very much. This was really cool. And they were really grateful for this opportunity. So I want to say thank you for me and thank you for them, too. No, I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. This maintenance knocking on the door now. So. Oh, perfect timing, man. 
Yeah. We'll let you get to your thing. I'll uh, I'll be sure to uh, put the the links to your stuff in the Posing Academy in the description. And um, guys, I know you're already following Terrence. He's about to break a million. Is he about to break, a, I think, a million people on freaking Instagram? Blows my yeah. mind. That blows my mind. So if you haven't followed him, help him crack that million because he's almost there. I'll put his Instagram down below too. And Terrence, thank you very much, man. We'll let you go grab the door, brother. We appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you so much. You guys have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.